Welcome to PyPod Chronicles, a series that brings our tech blog to life in a whole new way. Covering an array of topics surrounding Python and tech, from programming tips, best practices, and so much more. Let's get immersed in Python with the Nerd Nook on the go. I surely hope you guys are keeping up with the blog, because over there, I'm known as Rusty Raccoon. But if you're new here to the pod, I'm Josh, your host. And here we are in episode 11. Welcome. This one I gave a title of Data Visualization in Python with Matplotlib, a guide into visual storytelling. What will this episode be about? Well, you guessed it, visual storytelling and how we can tell stories with data in Python. I'm stoked to have you all here. Before I jump in for this episode, if you guys are looking for free learning resources, I've created you a free Python beginner cheat sheet. The link is in the description. Head over to the blog and you can get yourself a free copy of my free Python cheat sheet. In today's data-driven world, the ability to extract meaningful insights from raw data is more crucial than ever. And this is where the art of data visualization comes into play. So by leveraging the power of not only Python, but also matplotlib, we can perform and transform complex data sets into visually appealing representations that tell compelling stories to your audience. If you're unfamiliar with matplotlib, it is a Python library that specializes in data visualization, and it's used by data analysis as well as data scientists to plot their data. In this comprehensive guide, we're about to embark on a journey into the realm of data visualization, exploring matplotlib and uncovering the secrets of effective visual storytelling. Let's jump in, guys. Let's start off with the foundation you need for visual communication. It's essential to understand the core principles of visual communication. Just as a skilled artist has a brush to create these masterpieces. A proficient data visualizer uses matplotlib and other libraries to craft their own captivating visuals. So it's important to understand the importance of visual perception. Visual perception plays a crucial role in data visualization. Our brains are wired to process and interpret visual information rapidly. By understanding how this works, you can design visualizations to make it easy for viewers to comprehend your data. While that's important perception, it's also important to choose the right chart type. There are so many charts to choose from, so it's important that we choose the right one for not only your data, but also for your message. What message are you trying to convey to your audience? By matching your data characteristics and the story you want to tell with the appropriate chart type, you can create powerful, engaging visualizations for your data. Next up, how can we craft compelling narratives? Data visualization is more than just presenting information. It's all about telling a story. By crafting these narratives with your data, you can guide your audience through a logical flow of information. To do this, it's important you establish a clear objective, define the key message you want to convey to your audience, and structure your visualizations accordingly. When it comes to visualizations, aesthetics play a crucial role in their effectiveness. In this episode, we're going to dive a little bit into the principles of color theory, typography, and layout designs, empowering you to create visually captivating visualizations. By mastering the core principles of data visualization, you'll lay a solid foundation for creating impactful data visualizations. Let's get started with matplotlib. So first things first, if you don't have it installed, open up your terminal and go pip3 install matplotlib. Now you have it installed. In order to create your first plot, head over to VS Code, for example, and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now it's got a nickname. Anytime you want to use matplotlib, just refer to it as plt. For this test purpose, it's really easy if you just create two lists. So x equals a list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then y equals a list of squared numbers. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Just two basic examples. Now that you have your data, 
X list and Y list, you can create your plots. So to do this, it's popular to do AX equals subplots. Now subplots is a function specifically from matplotlib that allows us to create multiple plots. Now that you have AX, let's do AX dot plot. I'm calling the plot method. The plot method takes the arguments. What data do you want to plot? So here is where you would put your two lists, X and Y. That is gonna plot your data. All you would need to do now is call the show function to show your chart, and it's gonna appear. It's not gonna be great because you should be naming all your labels. Remember, you're making this to show to other people, to tell a story, so use words as well. If you want to set the title of the X label or the Y label, you can use the method set X label and set Y label. Use this method with your AX object. In order to set a main title, you can use the method set underscore title. This is just the foundation of your plot. That's pretty cool. Now, how can we customize your plot further to tell even more unique stories with your data? Well, let's talk about changing line colors and styles. You can modify the color, line style, and marker style of your plot using special parameters. Inside the plot function, after you insert your data, you could use the color parameter. So like color equals red. Now your line is gonna be red. You could say line style equals hyphen hyphen. Now your line style is gonna be like a dotted line graph, right? So I'm using these parameters to style my graph. If you wanted to add a grid to help your viewers interpret your plot more accurately, well, you could do that. Matplotlib has a grid function that automatically applies a grid to your plot. Grid takes the argument true. Let's talk about how you can handle different types of data. Data comes in various forms, and Matplotlib provides flexible options for visualizing your data. So a few common scenarios that you might occur are numerical data. Matplotlib excels at visualizing numerical data. It's really good for this act. You can create line plots, scatter plots, and bar plots that represent the relationships in pattern within numerical data. Remember, there are endless chart types. Next up, we have categorical data. When dealing with categorical data, you could use something like bar plots, pie charts, and other various techniques. You can assign different colors and patterns to each category to make your plots easier to interpret. Because that's why we use matplotlib. You can read an Excel spreadsheet but maybe your coworker can't, or the person you're trying to convey your idea to. Creating a visually appealing chart is gonna help. Think of it like turning data into art. And the last type of data I'll talk about is time series data. But Matplotlib actually has built-in support for handling time series data. You can plot time series data using line plots or area plots, all while customizing the axis formatting to display dates and your times appropriately. That's pretty cool. Well, there you have it. I've touched on numerical data, categorical data, and time series data. To go beyond just exploring matplotlib and its basic functionalities, I'm gonna to touch on a few other things we can add in here. Now, I've only talked about matplotlib so far, but with Python, there are many other things that you can use for data visualization. And as data analysis is a big part of Python, it's crucial that you experiment with some of these. So for example, there is a powerful library called Seaborn, and this is built on matplotlib. You can use Seaborn in matplotlib, and I've done that in a few of my projects. This specializes in statistical data visualization. Seaborn offers a user-friendly interface that allows you to create attractive and informative charts. With Seaborn, you're able to generate visualizations like violin plots, box plots, heat maps, and so much more. And it provides built-in functions for exploring distributions, relationships, and pattern within your data. It's like one step above matplotlib. And then if you're looking to get away from matplotlib, something that's becoming incredibly popular is called Plotly. 
And I'm actually going to have a few episodes on here about Plotly. If you want to read about it, I already have a few articles on the Nerd Nook about Plotly. And this is great for interactive visualizations for the web. So Plotly is a versatile library for creating web applications and dashboards. It has various chart types, all of which Matplotlib has, and you can embed visualizations in web pages and share them online. It also adds interactivity features like tooltips, zooming, along with online platform for collaboration and publishing. So Plotly was actually built on the Flask framework. So when you do your data visualization here, you're actually hosting it on a web site itself, which makes it great for when you have to share around. And Plotly is really powerful, so I'm excited to do a few episodes about it in the future and continue to write about that. To wrap up this episode, data visualization is a powerful skill that helps reveal insights into your data. With using Python, as well as the appropriate library like Matplotlib, you can effectively communicate complex information and engage your audience visually. Whether you're a data scientist, a business analyst, or just a guru who enjoys creating art out of data, well, you can use Matplotlib and Python to do that. I loved having you guys here for this episode, and I, and I hope you got something out of today. Well, that's all for now. Thank you guys for tuning in for this episode of PyPod Chronicles. And be sure to check out the blog if you're looking for more. Link is in the description. Guys, that really helps support what I'm doing here by education and growing my platform. If you can share the podcast, if you can subscribe to my free newsletter, every little thing helps us grow together. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next episode.